Unlike real life, with books, you get four first impressions. Good Monday, Word Nerds. I know that Good Monday kind of sounds like an oxymoron, but we're going with it. Today we are slinging inks, and we are talking about the four firsts in books. More specifically, the four first impressions. Generally speaking, you have four chances within the body of your book to hook the reader. Now, you can extend these hooks to cover design and the synopsis, but I'm talking about the words on the page, the meat of the sandwich, if you will. It's not often where I'll pick up a book and think to myself, I'm going to read this entire thing no matter what the first line, first paragraph, first page, or first chapter is like. Harry Potter are the only books that actually have reached that level of commitment for me. So for every other book out there, including the one that you are writing right now, you have four chances to keep me reading. The very first chance you get is the opening line. I can't personally say that this makes or breaks a book for me. I mean, I love an opening line, and if it's done really well, it can have a lasting impression on me. But I've never read a mediocre first line and then just stopped reading. I don't even think that's a thing I'm capable of doing. So moving on to the second first impression you get is the first paragraph. This is usually where my opinions start to take root in whether or not I think I'll be able to actually read the book. Still, I don't think I've ever stopped reading after the first paragraph just because it was okay. I mean, if there was grammatical errors and the prose just wasn't up to par, that's totally different. There is a huge difference between a bad book and a badly written book. Again, first paragraph isn't a make or break for me. The third first impression that you get is the first page. The way some books are formatted now, the first page sometimes isn't even much more than the first paragraph, but this is kind of where my make or break mentality starts to work. If you're if your opening line wasn't super fantastic and that first paragraph kind of fed off of that opening line, you have the rest of the first page to keep me interested and make me want to turn that page and keep reading. This is the deciding moment for me on most occasions. Not necessarily the deciding moment where I put the book down, but the deciding moment whether I have a pretty good idea if I'm actually going to finish reading this book or not. I mean, it's really scary if you think about it. You pour your heart and soul, your blood, sweat, and tears into this book, and a reader can pick it up and make a complete judgment in, like, a minute. I mean, look at that. That is not a lot of words, but that's all you get for a lot of people. All of this is at stake for what is written on this page. This one page. So let's recap before we move on. I've read your first sentence, and that doesn't really mean much to me unless it's fantastic. I've read your first paragraph, which doesn't make or break me, but I'm starting to reserve judgment. And I just reached the bottom of your first page, and this is where my opinions are starting to become real things. And now I have reached the very end of the first chapter, which is your fourth and very last first impression to make. This, my friends, is the moment where I either sit the book down and forget about it, or I turn that page from chapter one and start reading chapter two. I didn't go in depth with how to actually make a strong first impression because this video is an introduction of sorts to our Word Nerd live chat, which is happening this Sunday where we will be talking about, you guessed it, the first four impressions. So don't forget to tune in this Sunday to hear us talk about this much more in depth about why these four things are so impactful and how to achieve that maximum impact in your own writing.